Hey, how's it going guys, this is Zarai here. So, I wanted to discuss this uh, recent interview that has happened with OB Vermiji. Uh, hopefully I'm not butchering his name. He's basically an ex-Rockstar North developer. He was working for the studio for almost 10 years as a technical director. He's also been credited uh, in many of the Rockstar games such as Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and of Grand Theft Auto 4. Around about last year he started sharing a lot of details regarding of these games of these three particular games of the behind the scenes and the development and unfortunately he had to well take down quite a few articles that he mentioned due to he's received an email from Rockstar North from some of the developers that were not exactly happy with some of the things that he mentioned so you know with the respect he taken them down and he kind of winded down on these things but recently he made yet again an appearance, but you know, he didn't really mention too much regarding what he's been working on in those Grand Theft Auto games. By the way, I should mention that he's actually the guy, you guys know a little bit of an easter egg, I believe from in San Andreas. Basically, if you snipe the moon, uh, you actually make the moon larger. If you guys did not know that, it's a part of the easter egg, it's been there since I believe day one. He's the one that made it basically. And the reasoning is because the developers did not know if they wanted to make the moon look more realistic, so have a little bit smaller in size, or more cinematic, so it will actually be larger in size. So he decided to just make it, you know, an option for the, uh, the, for the players. Because at that time as well, while they were making this decision, he was working on the sniper rifle, and uh, basically he implemented this uh, while using sniper rifle you shoot at the moon you use aim you shoot and you can enlarge the moon if you wish so you have a small medium and large sizes so he's as i mentioned already in commentary he's been interviewed by gta base and i wanted to get into it a few of the questions and answers that he mentions and also asks how did you first get into game development and eventually find yourself a role at the Rockstar North? And he's answered, I finished a degree in physics 1994 when I was 24. At that point, making games wasn't really considered a serious job. It was only after I saw some ads in the Edge magazine that I realized I could make a living from it. I applied everywhere and got a job offer from the DMA Design in the Dundee, Scotland. The day before I started, I met Leslie Benzie in the B&B. &B. We and eight other people started the same day and started working on the space station Silicon Valley for the uh, Nintendo 64. For a number of years, I shared the place with Leslie and uh, two others. In 1999, when Space Station Silicon Valley was finished, uh, the company set up a satellite studio in the Edinburgh. Uh, most of the Space Station Silicon Valley team moved to Edinburgh, and so did the Body Harvest team. They started on the manhunt. The main company was closed down by Take Two, and the satellite studio was renamed Rockstar North. I always had the luck to be on a team with not too many experienced people, so I was able to move up quickly. This was how it was in the games industry. It was all very new, and there were not many people with experience. Next question. With Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, and Grand Theft Auto San Andreas running on the renderware engine, how was the studio's transition to rage internally when it came to Grand Theft Auto IV's development? The timing was good because we were able to use a renderware engine for San Andreas and after that we had to change the whole bunch of stuff anyway. It would have been much harder if we had to change engine during the PS2 era. Rage was developed by Rockstar San Diego and they were great with helping us. It didn't feel like the engine was a separate thing. We all worked as a team. Sometimes people from San Diego would come over to Scotland to help us and etc. The reality is that we would have to change a lot of stuff anyway. We had never used the shaders before and that was now a thing. All in all, and the transition was pretty smooth. Next question, any thoughts on the infamous San Andreas Bigfoot myth? This is the interesting question. It's interesting how these stories just don't die. I only realized later that many people went looking for Bigfoot in San Andreas. Then they thought they could hear him while in fact it was CJ's stomach rumbling. <laughs> Do you ever get to meet some of the higher ups in the company like the Hauser brothers or Leslie Benzie? I was pretty good friends with Leslie at the time and we're still friendly. I was involved with the management meeting at North so I saw him loads at work too. I occasionally met Dan, not too often really. 
Sam came over once in a while, maybe three times a year, and occasionally we meet him in New York. The Housers are a lot of fun to be around. There were culture difference between New York and the North. When they were in Scotland, they made sure to adapt to our culture. Next question, seeing Grand Theft Auto Trilogy uh, projects you initially worked on uh, on the on Beaver Remastered, what improvement could have been made by a studio internally to stop such a bad release? I think the studio Grove Street games just weren't given enough time and manpower to do it properly. They converted three games on six platforms, I believe. I think the company is fairly small, maybe 30 people, and I think they had only two years to do it. They just needed more time and resources. I believe they managed to fix most of the bugs by now. And here's the last question. You worked on quite a lot of other projects at Rockstar too, like Liberty City Stories and Vice City Stories, so what is your favorite title in the franchise and why? Even though my name is on the credits, I didn't do any work for them. It was all Rockstar leads that did those. Oh, I kind of want to step in here. It's actually because of his work that he's done initially for Grand Theft Auto 3, Vice City and San Andreas. A lot of his components and his work that he's done for those games. That's why the reasoning it went over to the Vice City stories and of course Liberty City stories. I've really only worked on Grand Theft Auto 3 in the PlayStation 2 and the PC versions. Vice City, PlayStation 2 and PC versions. San Andreas on the PlayStation 2 and Grand Theft Auto 4 on the consoles. And just a couple of months on Manhunt. My favorite one is Vice City. It's all the crazy gameplay from Grand Theft Auto 3, but with much better atmosphere, setting, and music. It's genuinely interesting to come back to revisit some of the favorite games of all time, mind you. Now that the Grand Theft Auto series, especially the trilogy, is more than 20 years old, whew, just to think about that is really is insane. Now that we have seen the trilogy remastered, well, even though it was not a very good release, Let's hope, of course, that Grand Theft Auto 4 will receive a better treatment in terms of its remaster. Or perhaps port, who knows. I actually have a video all about that coming tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe. See you guys all and have a wonderful day.